What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and I've been looking forward to doing this video for a while. Today we're looking at the Home Depot Survival Kit and in particular this is the Home Depot Urban Survival Kit. So this is a bag that I put together if you were still in New Orleans, let's say after Hurricane Katrina or still on Staten Island or in New Jersey, some of the other areas that were hit by Hurricane Sandy. This is not a bag to grab and run off to the woods and to live for a week in the Rocky Mountains. This is not a bug out bag. You're basically in a situation where you can't go back home to grab blankets or sleeping bags or things like that, canned food, whatever it might be. Now, one thing as I was putting this kit together that I thought was, you know, thanks be to God that in those situations, neighbors are often helping neighbors. So you run to somebody's house and they say, yeah, come and stay with us. You know, we'll, we'll put you up. We'll, we'll survive together until things get sorted out. Um, but this bag gives you options to survive and be sustained for a while even if there aren't a lot of other people around. Now, I'm not saying apocalypse here. I'm just saying that if uh, you were in a situation where you had to depend on you and then also becoming a resource to other people, here's a kit that could actually be helpful in that process. Now, I appreciate the comments from the Lowe's Survival Bucket and some of those comments that I thought were really good and the suggestions I've taken and added and changed the, uh, the bucket into a bag. I've changed other things from this kit. Um, the other thing I do want to know is that some people that when they talked about the low survival bucket, they were like, oh, you should add this and this and this and this. We're talking about for that kit, it was you had to get everything from Lowe's. For this bag, for this kit, everything has to come from Home Depot. So you can't just say, you should get a better knife or you should get this or that. It has to be items you get from Home Depot. I would say overall, uh, you can get you know good survival or, or emergency items from Home Depot and Lowe's. Overall, I was a little bit more impressed with Lowe's with their selection and the different items that they had. But uh, enough of me talking about my philosophy on it. Let's actually take a look at what I put in the bag and uh, show you what I put together for this urban survival bag from Home Depot. So first we'll talk about the bag and some of the contents you can see on the outside here. Obviously this bag is from Husky. Uh, they had some bags that were smaller, some that were larger. This one, this one ran $30 and some of the smaller ones obviously less expensive, the large ones more expensive. Uh, I like this one because of the handles which seem quite sturdy. And then also this has a shoulder strap. Some of the larger bags, again, more expensive. They had more room. Some of them actually have wheels built in, which for me in an urban survival situation or, you know, post a natural disaster in an urban situation, I don't want to have a bag that is going to be built so I have to depend a lot or even, you know, in part on wheeling it around. If there's a lot of junk in the streets, I just want to be able to pick up the bag, throw it on my shoulder, or carry it, and go. So that's why I chose this one. And also trying to keep the cost, you know, relatively under control for this project, uh, $30 seemed reasonable to me. A couple of things you can see on the outside here. This is Twisted Mason line, and you can do a lot of different things with this. I mean, even if you just, you're just you setting up camp for the night and you want to you know dry some stuff out, now you've got uh, a line you can do that. Obviously the rope you can do that as well, but if you're using the rope for something else, now you have this. You can always make a net uh, with this. If you do have a situation where you could fish, you know, if you're in a, a uh, place where maybe it is an urban situation but there are some ponds or rivers whatever that you could fish in and it's clean to do that you can use this obviously as fishing line easier than trying to uh, use rope or you know the inner part portion of some sort of rope paracord something like that so anyhow that's why I've got this a variety of uses for that we do have a big portion of rope here let me take this off it's attached with a carabiner that was included non weight bearing carabiner it actually had a sticker on it a little trouble here but anyhow had a sticker on it which I took off that said this is not for rock climbing so but you know another option to carry things or attach things with this carabiner and then you've got the rope here it's all bundled up I didn't want to take it out of this nice compact package I left this on here uh, because it does have some information as you can see 244 pound and then you know talks about kilograms but also this is just another piece of paper so if you needed to get something to burn it's not exactly paper it's got a little bit of plastic um, in it but to get a fire going you could use this and I'm keeping this on the outside of the pack because a it takes a lot of space inside the pack and B it's got this carabiner right there so I can just attach it to the pack and go from there a couple more things on the outside here this is the knife that I found and quite a nice knife for only seven dollars and coast is not known for making knives as much as other products um, you know, people would go to a different knife company if they had to probably, but seven bucks, pretty nice knife for, you know, something you're going to get from Home Home Depot. I'll show you what it looks like up close here. You can see the liner lock, other side with a pocket clip, 
DX340 and then you've got your safety here so when that is pressed up you can't push the liner over to the side you push this back down and you can get the liner like that and close it. The reason I have this on the outside is actually it would probably be in my pocket um, I would put it into my pocket and just carry it as a knife and I, there are other cutting options in here but again just a knife to cut rope, cut string, cut through things whatever it might be um, nice to have that so coast knife only seven bucks two other things on the outside here two sharpies and sharpies obviously writing utensil duh but um, one thing I noted in my what did I call it? my last ditch survival kit is that if you have to write down notes you can write it on your hand on your arm someplace where maybe there's not going to be as much sweat as on your palm but you know if you have to say hey I went down three blocks and over two blocks boom you write it down there now it's on your uh you got your information right there. If you have a pad of paper, even better. But, you know, this is something that's readily accessible on the outside of the bag. And now you can write down directions, write a note for somebody, whatever it might be. So now let's just flip around the bag to the other side. We'll see what's on the back there. On the back side of the bag here, obviously you can see I have some more rope. And what I've done is I've run the shoulder strap through this uh, handle. So again, it's not going to take up space inside the bag. And you can obviously tell diamond braid poly cord. And this is 75 feet. And again, high visibility, it's bright, it's float, it's mildew resistant, just a lot of uses for cordage. So this is very lightweight. It's already wound up for me, so I didn't want to take it apart. Um, some people might say, well, you can compress it and make it even smaller. That's true, but this is organized as is, so I'm keeping it in this uh, in this form. And as you can see, 50 pound working load there. So a couple of different varieties for cordage. And then the one other thing, I'm gonna come around this side of the camera. On the front here, you can see, let's see if I can get these out. Um, one of the things is that the more stuff you put inside, the harder it is to get the stuff out of these outside pockets. But what we have here is, you can see, fire starter. This is actually in the barbecuing section, and there's about 10 uh, between these two different pockets. But this is for getting a fire going. Um, yeah, if you got matches or light or whatever it is, you can just get it rocking, hopefully. But in case it's wet outside, now I've got an option to get a fire going. So especially... When I'm thinking about post um, Hurricane Sandy down in New York City, Staten Island, those areas are really, you know, New Jersey, they got really hard hit. People are just setting up shop in the street just to hang out with one another and stay warm. If you can't get a fire going, especially then in the middle of winter, man, just rough. So having a fire starting option, that's a nice addition, I think, to an urban survival kit. So that can go back into either one of these pockets. So you can see down into the bag, let me just show you very quickly, it does close like this, so it kind of folds in the two sides like this, and I did have to kind of compress it down to get it zipped up. Uh, the reason a lot of people like a tactical bag, you know, for a bailout bag or something like that, emergency bag, is because they have so many pockets. This thing does have so many pockets, but once you just get it filled to the brim, you just start piling stuff and organizing it that way. So as we open it up here... You can see one of the first things I have here is just some tubing, and this has a variety of uses. The, the primary thing I was thinking about was, um, you know, if you had a water source that was a little bit hard to get to, um, but seemed, you know, like you could actually use it, here's a way to actually uh, get that. Doesn't mean putting it in one end and drinking directly from the other end. Maybe you could siphon it out and then you could purify it, but now you've got tubing, and again, more than just that use, but that's the primary one I was thinking about. Second, we have two bottles of water. There's one, here's the second. And that's just because if you're in a disaster situation, it's nice to know that you have water to start with. You're not starting out and saying, where can I go find water? So two things of water. Uh, some people, you know, if they're paranoid or concerned about the water, the bottle breaking and then dumping out all over the place, yeah, you could certainly put it in a garbage bag. I just chose not to. Um, these seem a little bit more stable than some of the other, like the Poland Spring ones are a little bit more flimsy than this. So that's why I just left it as is. This seems like it may be just a crazy thing to put in there, but um, again, you have to get these items from Home Depot according to this project that I was This can doing. entertain farmers you, distract Almanac. you from some of the struggle that you may be going through, and also knowing what the weather will be according to the Farmer's Almanac might actually be a help. You can see in the back here, there's ads. So if you're in a situation where you just want to not be thinking about the tragedy you just went through, this could be a good thing just to, to read through. If you guys have looked at some of my other kits, I usually have a Bible in there both because I'm a pastor, maybe to help other people, but also, you know, to have something to read and encourage myself. So this is the best I could find compared to uh, compared to finding a Bible at uh, Home Depot. This is what I, uh, the closest thing I could find. So Farmer's Almanac for 2014. A couple different masks. Uh, this one's a little more heavy duty. 
than this one. Uh, they do have, you know, 30 and 40 and $50 masks at Home Depot, but again, the size, they're not easy to collapse. They're very large. So I got, you know, ones that are already sealed here and one that was not sealed. I took it out of the packing because it was just kind of hard plastic, took up a lot of space. So again, if there's dust, just a mess uh, in the air, this could be a good thing to have to keep that out of your mouth, out of your nose. Gloves. Uh, one thing I'll note is that Home Depot does not care, carry mechanics gloves, which are my preference, but these are inexpensive uh, leather, all purpose, and they come in a variety of sizes. And these are like 250 I think, something like that. So relatively cheap. They're not going to give you a lot of warmth if you're in a cold situation, but it will give you at least a little bit and keep your hands away from touching nasty things or having to deal with something that's, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more dangerous. So now you have some protection for your hands. You can see here. Got some protein, and uh, just mix it up as far as the two different styles. No particular, no particular reason. Um, one thing I will note is that I have a good friend who uh, hiked the Appalachian Trail when she was in under, or when she finished her undergrad, and when she was about halfway done, she did the entire thing end to end, 2,000 plus miles. Half halfway through, she met a guy who said, "You need to stop eating just carbs. You need to eat protein because your body's breaking down the muscle." And trying to add more because you're risking working out all day long and you're not giving it the protein to do so. So, um, yeah, you want to have lots of calories, but also you want to be making sure your body can rebuild um, your muscle as if you're out, you know, in a crisis situation. So I'm not saying you want to have a steak every night, but nice to have at least some option that's not just candy or whatever it might be that you could find at Home Depot. This is... The original Quickie 2 Super Pack Absorbent Towels, just for general cleanup uh, at the end of a long day. Nice to be able to clean up after yourself uh, or clean up, you know, sweat, whatever it is. Maybe you can find a place to to uh, wash up a little bit. So that's why I added these. Um, you, you can get, a, uh, you know, like a little, what are they call it, a butane torch like that they use for plumbing and stuff. But that's a lot of weight, a lot of hassle, I think. So this is just a basic lighter here. You can see that actually works. And uh, not my favorite option. I'd rather have... Uh, you know, a fire starter like a fire steel, and then obviously uh, just like a couple Bic lighters would be great. But here's my option to get the fire going. And let's look at one more thing before we change the angle here. This is a Coast headlamp, and there were a variety of different products there. Coast makes very good quality. Um, flashlights, headlamps, things like that. And this one, let's see if I can get it set up here. So you can see we got the LED there and then red as well. So you've got a couple different options. This is to preserve your, your uh, night vision. And then it's a headlamp. So when it's on your head, it's free. Uh, your hands are free. You don't have to worry about, you know, holding a flashlight like this while you're working on something. Now, uh, let me talk about this. Close this up and I'll just kind of balance that there. The other thing I was, I actually purchased was this and this is as you can see a headlamp from energizer and a um a flashlight and if you can look here it's got a folding stand so you could set it up you know set it up and you could be shining it at whatever you're working on now i i didn't commit to this as you can see i didn't take it out of the package i like to have you know the coast headlamp another headlamp and then a backup flashlight great another reason i chose this is because this takes triple a's and this takes triple a's now they did have a coast flashlight that was very nice, but it took double A's. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. You know, would you carry two different types of batteries or would you just say, no, even if I'm a little less uh, content with the quality of say this Energizer pack versus another Coast option, no, I want to carry this because I just want one type of battery that I have to deal with. So, um, you know, that, that'd be interesting discussion. Uh, put your comment down below. Let's hear your thoughts on that. But this was the other option I was looking at for, for uh, a lighting option. I don't want to just depend on one headlamp. So. You got this small headlamp here and then you have the flashlight as well and i think this ran you know probably about 10 11 dollars so pretty inexpensive for what you get from this uh from this setup here all right continuing on here we have a milwaukee and this is an 11 in one driver set so i just kept this little plastic piece on just for safety but 11 different options built into this one uh one driver i will show you at the end i'll put all the items together so you can see them but in an urban survival situation, I want to have tools. I will, I'll show you a multi-tool in a little bit, uh, a Leatherman, but in a wilderness survival situation, I don't need a Phillips head screwdriver most likely unless I got to repair some of my own kit. But in an urban su survival situation, um, 
you know, an urban bailout bag, whatever it is, to have some sort of tools is nice. So Milwaukee, a good brand. They did have a variety of different ones. They actually had one from, um, I forget the name of the brand, but it's actually Home Depot. It's kind of like Cobalt is what Lowe's sells. Home Depot has their own. It just looked a little junky, and this one was very compact. And the other one had more drivers, but there was nothing to put it in. This is all in one little setup. So I would have had all these bits that were just kind of floating around the bag. Even if I put them in pockets, I got to dig through. This is all in one, and obviously Milwaukee high quality brand so there's one one tool also on this side you can see I've got my husky thermos and you know one thing to note about this is that because it is insulated boiling water to purify in it is obviously not going to be like just doing it in a clean canteen or something like that but just to open this up and show you what's inside there's a little piece of paper you know instructions or whatever but more things to burn you certainly could put items in this uh, the reason I have this is because if I you do get a hold of water um, I've got those other two Dasani bottles but to have this to carry water that I find or filter to me would just be a worthwhile investment I wish they just had a Nalgene but this uh, nice thing about this is that it's pretty slim so now I've got an option to actually carry my water uh, while I'm out in that survival situation and I know people are going to have comments on this, and you should. Uh, I got this because if you do eventually get to a place where you have electricity, now you can plug in, charge something up, whatever it is. Uh, some people say, oh, you got to get a heavy duty, you know, some heavy duty uh, extension cord, not this tiny little dinky gauge one that, you know, you'd plug a lamp in in your living room. I get it. I agree with you. Generally speaking, I'm trying to deal with the restraints on the size and the weight of the pack, the cost of the overall kit. So that's why I went with this. This is a 12 foot one. As you can see, a couple different options here when it comes to plugging in. And I will show you, I have one of those, you know, uh, three prong to two prong adapters. Also, if you get to a place where, you know, you have to uh, plug something in and the, the, you don't have the right number of prongs or whatever, I have one of those. So that's why I chose this one. But you know, if you're like, oh, you should get one of those heavy duty orange ones. I get it. I totally get it. This was just my my take or my opinion on what I wanted to invest my uh, my money in. A couple more tools here. Very basic Stanley hacksaw, and this is obviously very small. And I just kind of threw the blade in there. But if you do have to cut through any metal, you know, especially in an urban situation. A couple more options here for tools. We do have this Fiskars power tooth folding saw. You need to press this, swing it out. That's what it looks like. Uh, I really like the Corona one that I have from Lowe's, but uh, that's Lowe's. That's on Home Depot. So, uh, again, to cut through things or get people access or, you know, get access to a place that maybe something's falling down on top of. Now you've got this as an option. Let me just get that back in place there. It's hard to, look, hard to do looking through the camera screen here. All right, so cutting option. And then another cutting option here. This uh, small hatchet. Rock Force, not familiar with them, but um, I did want something that was lightweight. I found that the wood handles were lighter than the uh, fiberglass ones. This actually does have a, um, a little plastic cover for the blade. It just fell off in the bag. But you could certainly use this for hacking, cutting, and then the backside as a hammer as well. The one thing I don't have with this that a hammer would obviously give me is something to pull nails with. But again, that's one of those decisions I made in the process of putting the kit together. So there's your, there's your hatchet. Let's look at and see what else we have in this side. Sharpening stone. This is something that a lot of people mentioned in the last uh, video I did, the, the Lowe's survival bucket. So that's a good idea, you know, to have a stone to sharpen your blades or whatever it might be. So I got this, I think it was $9.97. So not super expensive. Now we have an option to sharpen some of our tools. Got a um, vice grip. And I got the Husky brand. I trust them as a brand. They've got some good stuff. Some of it's not as good. Um, but this is an option, obviously, to, uh, you know, when you want to have an advice. Do any I type of work. Quite nice. So I got this as another one of our tools. A couple other things in here. Yeah, the HDX. That's the uh, Home Depot brand. So this is the uh, basically a way to access water. So if someone, you know, if there's a, a, a spigot outside that doesn't have the knob on it, now you can actually operate it with this to get access to water not guaranteeing you you know everything being perfect that you have water all the time now but now you at least have an option and i kept the, it just organized with this because again you can burn some of the uh burn some of the paper and this slipped in down the back of the pack quite easily no issues to uh to store it in the bag a couple other things on this side tarp 
Again, HDX 6x8 medium tarp. Um, some people recommended, or at least one person recommended last time, getting some Tyvex. I have used that for camping as a ground cloth. It's great. It's it's you know keeps the moisture out, etc. etc. I just found this because it has a little bit more structure to it. If I had actually set this up over myself, this would actually I find give me a little bit more form to what I was trying to build. So that's why I chose this one and six by eight because that'll cover you know maybe me and a, a two other people, one other person pretty comfortably um, if you set it up properly. So medium duty tarp, six feet by eight feet. And let's see, we got that's just the cover to the axe. Next up we have our hex keys and again this is Husky that's the uh, I know one of those brands that Home Depot carries or one of their main brands they carry. Obviously this is metric. Uh, you can get this in more extensive and less extensive ver extensive versions. I just found that this was the right size for the kit I have and again another tool option we have now in our kit. A couple more things on this side just a basic pen or pencil I'm sorry and the nice thing about this is that it's not a pen, so it's not going to die out on you or freeze on you. And you don't need a pencil sharpener. You can just sharpen it up with a blade. Two light sticks if you did need to signal or, you know, set these up to find your uh, your camp or your shelter in the evening or when it got dark. Now you've got a couple of those. And the last thing on this side is this right here, which is Leatherman, as you can see. The Wingman. I think I might have said Wave before, but anyhow, this is the Wingman. Runs about thirty dollars. Not nearly as extensive as some of, some of the other Leatherman uh, multi tools out there, but it is a what Home Depot sells, and B it's Leatherman. It's a good quality product. It's got blades. It's got a couple different drivers and things on it. So now I've got a multi tool, and I would I, I kept this in the bag, but again, this could be something. Keep the knife on in one pocket and this in the other pocket. All right, looking into the other side of the inside portion of the pack here. One thing I bought is reflective tape, and they did have reflective safety vests, but they were a little bit more expensive. They do take up some more space, so I figured you can get some reflective tape. You can even buy a couple of these if you want, and you could put this on clothing if you had to walk at night, you know, and it was uh, dark out and people were driving cars or whatever. So 3M, I'm generally pretty happy with 3M's tape. I find it just generally works well, uh, so that's why I bought this instead of a reflective vest. You could certainly buy a reflective vest, strap it on the outside, or just wear it all the time, um, but that's... The reason I chose is just to reduce my size and weight of the bag. Something that was really popular from the Lowe's kit was this right here. These are rat traps. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you got to get food and you got to eat rats, you got to make the decision if you think that's sanitary enough. But certainly squirrels, chipmunks, small things like that. If you are in an urban situation, but there is, you know, some sort of park or something like that. Or if you're, you know, close to a city, but you're in a... You know the suburbs and there are still trees and woods around this is an easy way to catch some dinner in that type of situation where there's not a lot of food around so uh these are like two bucks a piece or something like that so very basic easy and can uh, acquire you can acquire some food that way gorilla tape this also is something that people were felt pretty strongly about from the last video they were like don't get duct tape just get gorilla tape instead so yeah obviously it's duct tape all amped up. Uh, Gorilla Tape is great stuff. I've used it before. I do like it. I just got the duct tape last time for the other kit, but um, there's a million uses for this. and I just keep it wrapped up in this form because I find it easy to transport and you can actually put things down inside it once you put it in the bag. So Gorilla Tape. Safety glasses. These are obviously sunglasses as well. Kept them in the package just to keep them from getting scratched up. Um, yeah, if you're doing something in the evening, you need safety glasses on the dark, uh, you know, the fact that it's, they're darker is going to make it a little bit more challenging, but I thought, you know, during the day, if you're out in the sunlight working on something, it's nice to have, uh, the sunglasses as well. And these are still in the bag. Like I said, I, I would keep them there and they're made by 3M safety glasses. Rain poncho. And you can see quite long. It's not a little dinky one. Uh, they note here, waterproof, snap closure, attached hood. Uh, they did have full rain gear, uh, but I thought this would just be a better option. So rain poncho. up. All right, got some candy here. Uh, this is just simple sugars, uh, something to taste sweet, taste good, and give you a little bit of an energy rush when you need it. So I grabbed three of these. The other thing about these is that even they get, even though they get really chewy and uh, kind of tough, they still last a long time. So Sour Patch Kids. Three more options for food. I've got some 
uh, reusable latex gloves. These are you know what people use when they do the dishes. But if you had to handle anything nasty and you didn't want to get your leather gloves dirty, you could use these. They do have a wide variety of these. There's ones that go you know all the way up your arm instead of just partially up your partially up your arm. But these I think would work fine for me. And then obviously a variety of sizes. Let's see what else do we have in here. Down on the bottom, two packages of zip ties. So 11 inch. And these I think are 11 inch as well. No, 10 inch. No, both 11 inch. Both 11 inch zip ties. There's 10 in each. They so have 20. I just mixed up the colors for kicks. Uh, these are also reusable. You certainly once you put them on, they're hard to get off, but you can depress the little uh, the little knob in there, the little piece in there to take them off. And uh, just tons of uses for this. More cordage or you know options like cordage, good to have. And these don't take up much space. So you could obviously add more of those as well because they're they're tiny, they're, they don't take up a ton of space in the pack. Let me just pull this out real quick. I think that's pretty much it from, oh, there's one little thing in the bag. But that is it from inside the bag. This must have fallen out when I put them into this container. But ear protection, this will give you an opportunity to protect your ears if you're going through a construction zone or something's really loud. And also at night, if there's a lot of noise or a lot of people out. Uh, again, I'm thinking a lot about Hurricane Sandy, there are a lot of people out just awake and trying to survive and make a lot of noise at night. But if you want to, you know, get some sleep, if you if you can't because it's so noisy, now you have this to help, you know, quiet things down inside your head. All right, so what I have here is, this is a one-quart container. It's for mixing. It's I got it in the paint section. You can see you've got an option to measure things here, which is nice. Obviously, liters, ounces, the whole thing's a quart. I bought the cap. If you did collect some sort of water, then you could put it in here. Also, if you collect, say you find a place that has raspberries, let's say, or strawberries or something growing, now you have a container to put, it in, put them in. Yeah, you could put them in your shirt, or you could just put them in your pockets, whatever, but here's another option to, uh, to carry things. Take off the cap inside. Let me see, shake some of these out. Mentioned the ear protection already. I think there's a couple more in there. Got a couple of these, and these are toe warmers. They're obviously smaller than the full-size hand warmers, uh, but they do they can give you an option to warm up if it is quite cold. So we've got two of those, and then we have down inside. You can see more ear protection, and also that three-prong to two-prong converter. And then here you've got I think I got four, yeah. Four bags of salted peanuts. Now, some people might say, all oh, salt's gonna dehydrate you. Yeah, you're right, but that's this is what they had. They could not find an unsalted option. You got fats and proteins in this, and that'll help you uh, give you a little nutrition while you're actually dealing with a urban survival situation. These are two other things that I'd like to add to my kit in some form. So I don't mean I'd be carrying this entire box of bags and that entire container of bleach, but uh, contractor bags, somebody mentioned this on the uh, comments from the low survival kit and I thought that was great and um, I've used 50 gallon drum liners in survival bags so this is obviously these are smaller but still uh, quite good and I wouldn't take all of them but you could put them as a liner within the uh, within the survival bag or that husky bag where all the other stuff is you could just stuff them into random pockets you know get a handful of these for various uses uh, in your bag and then bleach, obviously you can use that to purify water. If you're doubtful of that, you can actually check on the internet. There are government regulations or recommendations, as it should say, when it comes to uh, how much bleach you add to water to purify it if there is some sort of situation where your water is contaminated due to a natural disaster or whatever. I just need to figure out a way to carry the, ble the bleach in a small amount um, so I don't have to carry this whole thing. Uh, but just finding the right size container is something I'm still working on. So as with all the kits that I make, they're always in progress. But these are two other things that I would have in some form added to the Urban Survival Kit. So here are all the items in my Urban Survival Kit from Home Depot. Let me zoom in here just so you can see. I'll pan around. If you have questions, you can certainly comment below. You can email me at everydaytacticalvids at gmail.com. And let's get the discussion going down below. What do you? What would you add? What would you change? Um, what are things in your area, your Home Depot carries that maybe I don't have here? Uh, that's, you know, again, it has to be from Home Depot. Don't tell me you would have your K-Bar BK2 because I don't think they're selling that at most Home Depots. Um, has to be from Home Depot. Maybe changes, additions, 
tweaks on things that I've done. Also, don't just comment to me. If somebody else makes a comment and you agree or disagree, let's get the discussion going in that way. Always be respectful in that process, but you can disagree or have a different opinion and be respectful about doing that. As always, thanks for checking out the videos. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Tumblr. Take care.